Viewer discretion, I am not a professional. This is not a how-to video, and if you explode yourself as a result of following this video, it's not my fault, I warned you. But just make it easier for everyone and just don't blow yourself up. I also cannot stress enough that it's probably legally necessary in your area that your gas company comes and checks your work in order to ensure that you have fulfilled all of the appropriate codes, that you have no leaks, and that you're going to have a system that is safe and reliable. Again, please don't blow yourself up. And in fact, it's actually probably pretty difficult to do so as long as you're safe, as long as you take your time and you do the research necessary. All right, so got my trench dug. Gas line comes out of the house here. I do have downspouts and French drains tied in here. And my main water line comes into the house here. So all that's going on here. I don't know if it's okay to run this gas line back through here. Um, that's where I'm at. It's about 16 inches deep here. Um, couldn't really go much deeper because of those pipes and this stone I'm standing on. Um, but it does go alongside that stone and right about here it's 18 inches. And from there out, it's actually like 22, 24 inches deep. Um, this is my septic line. I planned on going under it. It's about 8 to 10 inches below. Yeah, we'll say 8 inches below that. Um, and it goes out here. There is some terracotta drain pipe there. I don't even know if it's functional anymore. But... Like I said, this is all 22, 24 inches deep. Um, I wanted to go deeper than 18 because we're going to flatten this. I wanted to have some wiggle room here. Um, more terracotta pipe that I'm not sure if it's even functional or not, but I'm, not, I'm going to leave it intact in case it is. I think it might be draining this hill behind me. Um, but anyway, from there it'll come up into the garage here. So I'm wondering if I can go ahead and connect my pipe with my um, stub ups now and bury this, but leave this area and that area open so the fittings are visible. Um, I just wanted to know if I could at least bury the majority of this so I can start flattening this out and uh, you know get a tractor over here and everything. Um, that's my trench. Dug most of it with a machine, but then it wasn't quite deep enough. And then I had to bust up a bunch of concrete over here. So I ended up digging it out by hand a good bit too. Um, there was a concrete wall right here and then a block wall right there. I think there was a porch here at one point, but anyway, I'm rambling. That's my trench. super gross it's very humid out here and i've been crawling around on the ground trying to get this uh gas line done um i've got a pressure tester here at the end of the run uh, i set it right at 25 about 10 minutes ago i'm gonna let it sit overnight see where it's at in the morning and if it looks good in the morning we'll let it go 24 hours uh, but anyway this is where it comes into the garage um, I'm going to terminate it and plug it for the time being, but I wanted to get all of the line in the yard done so I could fill this in and mow this again because it's getting kind of crazy over here. Um, anyhow, I also put this conduit, inch and a quarter uh, PVC pipe that I had laying around. Um, made a stub up here. I'm just going to cap it for now. And that will probably be for Ethernet down the road. Um, I figure since I'm digging this trench, I might as well. I had the pipe on hand and it made too much sense to go ahead and put a conduit so I can run Ethernet, communications cable, whatever, underground. Um, it's kind of goofy how this comes in here under this old terracotta pipe. I'm not sure what this is doing. It might be relieving water from the hillside. I'm not sure. But um, that's how I brought it up. Gas lines, the yellow line, of course. Keys in. Um, 
once I get this all connected and capped off, I'm going to put gravel here and flatten this, put a couple papers down, notch around this, probably do some kind of brick thing just so I don't, you know, step or kick that, step on or kick that. Um, anyway, that's where the gas goes into the building. Um, it's not the prettiest turn in this conduit. I heated it up gradually and I just worked it slowly until I got the bend I need. Um, the reason for this bend uh, partly is because I think there was a tree here and the old gas line ran around. It didn't go straight across like I thought. Um, but we are going to probably put a patio here. That's my goal anyway. And we wanted to minimize how much of this is under the patio just in case we'd ever have to dig it up for whatever reason. Over here gets tricky too because my sep septic pipe, which I broke, hence the fern co, and I was digging. But uh, my septic line comes across. And then also, I think I covered it up now. But my water line, my water line's there. So this ties into the French drain. Got my septic pipe, my water line, gas, and this conduit all kind of in the same trench or same area. There's an old brick wall right here. I think there was a porch here at one time. Um, it's kind of goofy, but I'm taking pictures and documenting this, so... God forbid the next guy's got to dig all this up. He'll have an idea of where it's all going. Uh, but once I get this filled in, I think that'll look okay. I'll probably paint it whenever I paint the house. And then I'm just going to cap. I'm just going to cap this for now. I don't know if I'm going to have to run it up into like the kitchen or if I can go straight into the basement with it. But I'll figure that out. We don't have the best internet out here anyway, so this is just kind of future proofing. Um, I would like to bury the service line from the house going to the garage eventually, because it's really low. Um, so eventually, when I get my service panel upgraded for the garage, I might have him bury that too, which will probably end up being in that trench again. But I digress. That's a future project. Uh, let's go in the basement. Part of the mess, but uh, my main gas line for the house comes in here, goes up. From there it goes to the heater, but then this was here, this old line. Um, Cause like I said, there was a gas line going out to the garage. It had this really old ball valve that I didn't trust. So I installed this newer style, just a quarter turn to turn it off. It's off right now. I'm pressure checking the system back to this ball valve. Um, water drop, whatever you want to call it, catch. Um, and there's a union here, which it was leaking the first time around. I had to replace it with a new union. Um, the old one's like a crop, copper crush style, and I think it had to go back like almost exactly how it was, and I couldn't quite get it to, to seal up, so I just put a new union here. But that's it's pretty clean, I guess. Um, I can shut off the garage here, and if I ever need to tap into this for whatever reason, down here in the laundry room, I can easily off of this uh, I think now I'm pretty confident this isn't leaking I'm gonna fill this with great stuff and get that buttoned up so all right so I did end up having to replace um, this piece and this piece uh, the threads on the end of this one were messed up kind of got cross threaded um, I had a leak there and when I took it off it was really hard coming off and really hard going back on so something was goofed up with the threads so it's cheap enough just to buy this couple pieces these couple pieces and um, I've got it under pressure test again we'll see how it holds up so I was feeling really good about the first bit of my last pressure test so I actually filled in almost everything I left both ends uncovered um, until the pressure test was done just because there's a fitting there to the yellow flexible pipe and a fitting over there. Um, took me probably 
two to three hours to fill all this in. Um, and during that time, it actually dropped a good five PSI. So I'm like, went and tested all of the fittings again and found this one. So all I'm doing is uh, spraying the joints with a 50-50 dish soap and water. And if you've got a leak, it's pretty, pretty evident. It makes this makes these bubbles that stick around for a while so you can I've been uh, going through and spraying all the joints and then I come back and check them if they're not evident right away and uh, I'm thinking I just didn't screw it this is a new fitting um, but I think I just didn't screw it on enough I was worried about getting this angle uh, but evidently I should have gone one more turn so that's okay, this is a pretty easy one to fix. This is probably the easiest one to fix, actually, so. All right, I just got home from work. It's been about 24 hours um, since I started the pressure test, so see how it fared. Oh, man. It didn't budge since this morning. So I actually set it, I set it at 30, but if you tapped... It, like I would set it at 30 and then kind of like jiggle. I don't know how good this pressure tester is, but it would kind of like reset like I don't know, half a PSI. But anyway, this morning it was exactly where it's at now. It has not moved in the past uh, 10 hours, 11 hours. So it hasn't moved at all in the past 11 hours. So we're good. We're awesome. I'm calling that good. I'm filling in the hole. So I tried uh, pressure checking the system um, back to the meter and it's leaking. So I had to call a gas company to come check this out. So I'm at Home Depot. There are a couple of leaks in my basement, uh, namely around this guy. Um, not very major leaks. Um, let me back up. I've tested the run I've made from the house to the garage. All of the fittings checked. As I showed in the video earlier, it held pressure more than long enough. Um, I think I tested it for like 24 to 30 hours. And I've tested it since then, much shorter interval, but it's pretty obvious that it's fine. My issue was there's a couple fittings in the house that I was afraid I might have tweaked while I was doing the new stuff. And I wanted to check those before I turn the heat on. Been busy, haven't really thought about it because it's been warm, it's been summer, uh, but now it's early October and it's cold here in Pennsylvania. It has been cold in the house um, at night. So uh, I need to be able to turn my heat on. And I'm like, well, shoot, I need to, I really wanted to test the fittings before I turn the heat back on. There's no shutoff in the house between the house and the meter. So the only way that I knew to test these fittings was to same way I tested the garage, uh, but with the garage leg turned on, turned on, um, that way I could back pressure the entire system from my garage to my house to the gas meter. When I did that, it wasn't holding at all. It didn't build one PSI, didn't build anything at all. So, I mean, after trying to put air into it for a long time, um, and also after having Amanda putting pressure into it while I ran around in the basement checking stuff with the spray. I couldn't find anything and it was going somewhere. So I called the gas company. Gas company came out, they disconnected my meter and put a cap on it. That way it isolated my problem without the meter um, and it built pressure instantly. Basically because of the regulator, um, I wasn't able to build pressure. So with it isolated, I was able to build pressure pretty quick uh, as expected. However, it's still was bleeding off I and mean, it dropped like 15 psi in a couple minutes found two leaks in the basement one being at this union going down to my furnace and then another really small one at just like another 90 degree so i'm fixing that now um, i'm at home depot I'm going to pick up some fittings and i'm going to redo these fittings which unfortunately to you know to get to one you have to take apart like 12 other things just to get to the one that's leaking so you end up redoing all of those joints that you disconnect so I'm gonna take my time with it. I wanna wire brush everything, reseal everything. I don't wanna to have to keep doing this. I have the sense in my gut with how fast it dropped pressure and how small the leaks we did find were. I don't think 
they're the only thing leaking. I'm confident my garage run, my new line is good. If I get these fixed and they're not leaking, I'll be confident that everything in the house is good. But unfortunately, if it continues to leak, that means the line from my house to the meter, which is across the road, by the way, there's probably a leak underground somewhere there. And if that's the case, <laughs> I just really hope that's not the case because I own that technically, um, the line from the meter to the house is probably 40 yards underground. And then I don't know how it goes from there to the meter, but it does go under the road as well. So fingers crossed these two little, two little leaks were letting off more air than they appeared to. But like I said, for how fast the pressure dropped in only a couple minutes and how small the, the bubbles were, I'm really not thinking that this was the only problem. So I had a bit of a, um, coming to terms with how overrated home ownership just might be compared to renting. Sometimes I really miss our apartment. I'm sure I'll reconsider that after this is all done. I flip flop between really proud and excited and comfortable at my house and cursing it and wishing we never bought it, etc., etc. I go back and forth between the two pretty dramatically and my poor wife has to witness me <laughs> do that uh, but she's very patient and encouraging um, and this is just home ownership I know I'm just cutting my teeth and getting used to it uh, this is my first house so uh, maybe you can relate maybe you've owned homes for years maybe you are a new homeowner like myself uh, researching gas line stuff or maybe you're renting wishing you had a home and it's all pie in the sky Home ownership is not the end all be all of making it. And my house is pretty humble. I'm sure you've seen it in this video and, and others. The whole buying a house versus renting thing has been really interesting. I don't regret buying our house. We bought it at a really interesting time, kind of in the middle of the pandemic, but we managed to find a property in a house that wasn't marked way up. And we fortunately got into a really good percentage rate on our mortgage. Again, it, it's a pretty humble house. Um, it's nice. I love it. I love our yard and our and the garage is cool and all, but I mean, in the grand scheme of things, it's it needs some work. It needs a lot of, it needs a lot. So like, I don't think we have made it necessarily, <laughs> you know, by some people's standards, but it's what we wanted and it made sense at the time and I don't regret it at all. But what a headache homeownership has been. I would say the good outweighs the bad and I know that all the stuff I'm doing right now is going to matter in the long run. Well, gosh, we had gas leaks in our basement that I only know about because I wanted to run a gas line to my garage and I pressure checked it beforehand. As much of a headache as this is, I'm, I'm fixing gas leaks um, that are either leading to gas in my house, which no one needs or wants and is incredibly dangerous, or I might end up finding a gas leak underground God forbid, but that's gas I'm paying for. So I could be overpaying for gas right now, who knows? So this is all stuff I don't wanna be doing right now, but I think it'll be well worth the effort. It's just in the middle of it, really frustrating. So I'm gonna go get parts. I'm probably not gonna record me working on stuff because this is not my favorite thing to do. And I, I'm kind of ugly when I'm working on this kind of stuff. Probably not very fun to be around. So I'll just recap afterwards. Couple days later, I have fixed the gas leaks in the house. Um, we had one up here at this junction where it ends up going to the garage. Um, real tiny leak. And then right here where it comes down to my furnace, um, it was leaking a little worse. Uh, I simplified the system a bit. I got rid of this goofy guy. I actually tried resealing it and it kept leaking. I just bought a new piece. But anyway, fixed the leaks in the house. Did another pressure check at 8 PSI and it's slightly better, but kind of how I expected it still drained off, which led me to think something's leaking between the house and the meter. This is where the gas comes in to my house. 
And after speaking with gas company today, they told me that's definitely not up to code these days. I mean, I don't know when these were done. Um, probably at the very least, the 50s, if I had to guess, just by some of the records I have of this house. Gas company was supposed to meet me here today. I left work early. Um, he ended up just calling me. He ran into an emergency with a different client. I told him that's fine. It's gonna to come tomorrow. But while I was waiting, I grabbed a shovel and I started digging. So that's where I just showed you the gas goes into the house. And that is a shutoff. A very grody shutoff. I'm gonna turn it off and at least try to isolate to here. If I can rule this as leaking, at least isolate the problem potentially. So I'm gonna do that now. So me and this shovel have really gotten to know each other um, in the two years I've been here. Um, I feel like the first year was spent getting the water system figured out. This year has been gas lines. Next year, probably electric. Um, but I keep telling myself these are worthwhile things to do because ideally once they're fixed, they're fixed for the next hopefully 30 to 50 years at least. So. Uh, hopefully it's worthwhile. I'm feeling a little better now that I found this valve, so I'm gonna get to it and uh, go from there. I also don't know where this uh, downspout daylights. I think it connects to the one on the corner, but then I had the hose going for like, I don't know, five minutes. I don't know where it's going. It's not showing itself. It's probably buried over, but it never backed up either, so it's going somewhere. All right, that's already holding better, so I put it up to 25. It's 5.45 p.m. Let's see how long it holds at 25. I'm gonna go spray all my joints again. good we're at 25 psi which is usually plenty to sh i mean it really shows itself at 25 i've been testing it at eight because of that end cap but now that i've ruled out the end cap by shutting that valve off um i cranked up the psi awesome Again, these bubbles are just because I've got such sudsy water. Um, it really, here, I'll go spray it on something I know that leaks and you'll see. Five minutes later, hasn't moved at all, which is already progress. I'm gonna let it sit probably overnight. Um, this leaks and it's tiny. You can't hear it. It is hardly enough to bleed off the compressor. I mean, that's a tiny, tiny leak. You can see how I mean it's moving. So even if I didn't catch it right in the moment with how sudsy this stuff is, if I came back five minutes later, like I just did, you end up with like that. And I can even wipe this off. And the residual soap. We'll just keep making, we'll just keep going. So don't be alarmed by the little bubbles in the video. This is what we're looking for. I mean, those are bubbles. And again, this is a tiny, tiny leak. So this is what I, <laughs> I've kept this around for this project because uh, it's a good test. But five minutes later, haven't, hasn't budged. I'm just gonna leave this at 25 and come back probably in a couple hours. Progress, at least uh, at least isolating the problem. Unfortunately, the bad news um, of isolating the problem 
good and bad news, I guess. Good news is it's not in the house anymore. Um, there's no leak in the house. The bad news is it's somewhere between here and my gas meter, which is across the road. And I've been told I technically own what's between the meter and the house. So that's unfortunate. That's unfortunate if that's the case. Um, between it being across the road, underground, and this not being up to code, probably want me to replace it. Um, gas company comes tomorrow. I'll show them what I found. Me being able to do an actual pressure test, um, Lord willing, it holds overnight at least. Um, I can say I've isolated the problem. Uh, which is great because before finding this valve there was some room for the potential that it was in the house still but now i can kind of prove that that's not the case so hopefully we're on the right path here um i really want to get this figured out this week it's getting pretty cold um past couple nights have got down to 40 outside and about 55 in the house the house is not insulated very well it's not not insulated it does have some degree of protection against the elements but it's not great so who knows maybe someday we'll tear all the drywall off and up the insulation probably not as long as we get our heater working i'd really like to get a secondary wood burner too i think that would be a game changer but we'll see what do you think dude I had the gas company come out. They told me that I was financially responsible from the house to the road. Anything that went under the road into my meter was not my financial responsibility. Um, and in fact, he told me that along the way, it should have been replaced, that section from the meter under the road, it should have been replaced with plastic at some point. He actually had a metal detector and he was following my gas line and right about probably five foot from the road. He couldn't detect it anymore. So that told him most likely once I dug there, I would find a plastic line joined to my metal line. So at that point I was feeling pretty good about just continuing to dig. And I did in fact find that plastic under the road. So at that point I knew I had about 50 feet of pipe that I was responsible for. And at that point I pretty much made my mind up I was going to replace it. So once I made my mind up that I was going to replace it, I again consulted the gas company and he told me that he could come out connect to their portion of the plastic line, run a new plastic line, bring it above grade. And at that point, it was up to me if I wanted to tie it into the house or not. Now, being that the gas line used to go in underground and now it needs to meet code by going above ground and then into the house, that meant I had to drill a new hole through my concrete foundation wall. I do have a hammer drill. Unfortunately, I was going to have to drill a pretty big hole and I don't have a bit that big. And if you price the bits, the bit alone are 75 to 150 dollars so when he first told me this i was considering letting him do all of the new pipe work up to where it would go into the house but at that point i priced out all of the fittings i would need it was going to be about a hundred dollars and then on top of that i was going to have to buy a masonry drill bit big enough to punch a new hole through the wall in order to drill that hole i was going to have to buy roughly a 100 dollars drill bit just to drill the hole for the new pipe to go through the wall at that point, I'm at it roughly $200, plus it was going to take me this entire weekend to do the work. We had some stuff going on by the time I got to all of it. And if I didn't run into any major issues, I was going to have my weekend wrapped up in connecting everything. And then on top of that, the gas company would have to take another trip back out here to pressure test it, diagnose any problems they might run into, and then hook my meter up. At that point, I asked him, how much is it going to cost to just have you all do it? He gets back to me and says $750 for everything. That gets you gas tomorrow. And I was like, deal. $750, I completely wasn't planning on spending this month. However, having them come out and essentially fix everything within a day's worth of work, I don't have to worry about doing anything myself. Essentially... They're going to check all of the work I've done as well, along with their work. And I'll just have peace of mind knowing that the entire system now should outlast me um, as everything underground is plastic 
and everything's been verified from the professionals at the gas companies. So that's where I kind of drew the line and I had to accept that even though this still feels like a pretty big DIY project, at some point I had to draw the line between what I was going to do and what professionals were going to do. All right, so I got everything dug up the other day. Um, my buddy Justin came over and helped me too. Um, that was Thursday. Today's Saturday. And obviously we're hooked back up to gas again. Um, gas company came out. They tied into the road here. Ran a new line all the way to the house. And uh, I actually paid them to tie into the basement as well. Over here is where the plastic from the meter came across the road. Um, that's what the gas company is responsible for. And unfortunately, it was right under these rocks. So they had to bring an excavator and move the rocks and tie into it. Uh, but that's all tied in now. And yeah. I gotta, I gotta finish filling in a ditch for them. Um, I asked them not to fill the whole thing in because I have to redo this downspout. It's kind of goofy how it's set up. Um, I want to reconfigure that. Also, still don't know where it exits, if it exits. I think it's just dumping into the ground over there right now. But anyway. And here's where they came through and tied into the existing system. This is where it used to come through, which is under grade which is not code anymore. And obviously that shutoff was underground and so really served no practical purpose. Um, I now have a shutoff on the outside and it comes in here. Um, I had them do this, tying in the new gas line into the system. Um, I figured instead of me trying to get the right pipe lengths, getting that hole dead accurate with the pipe lengths available to me, um, it seemed like it was just worth it to have them do it. So. Um, for the price they quoted me, it was kind of a no-brainer. So I'm going to end this part of the video here. It's already gotten to be pretty long, and this is a good stopping point because at this point, all of the utility end of this project has been taken care of. In the next video, I'll be hooking up a heater and running all the plumbing internally within the garage to the heater from the new gas line that we just ran. I'll also have to do some electrical work. I've been watching the prices of natural gas heaters and... Over the past year, they've gone up and they really haven't come back down. So I'm probably just going to have to wait till one goes on sale or just bite the bullet and buy the one that I want to buy. But regardless, that video will not be the video after this one, most likely, um, as it'll probably take me some time to get everything else together. But I assure you, I'll do my best to log all of that and come out with a part two to this series. I hope you got something out of this video. I know I got a lot out of the project itself, namely balancing when to draw the line on a DIY project, drawing that line between how much are you willing to do, how much should you do, and when do you hire a professional? So in this video, obviously you saw I did a lot of the work myself. Before I began work on this, I did consult some friends of mine that work in the gas industry. I wanted to make sure that what I was doing was safe. I researched all of the codes for our area and I tried to exceed them. I'm gonna take a wild guess and say, if you're watching a DIY gas line video, you're trying to do this yourself as cheaply as possible. So if you're going to do that, if you're able to do this kind of work without letting your townships or whatever know, please just be safe and do your research and make sure you're doing things safely. Again, I'm not responsible if you explode yourself, so just please don't do that. I think if you are doing any kind of gas work, it's probably going to look similar to this, where even if you're willing to do a lot of the work yourself, you may have to end up paying to some degree for a professional to check your work. Another lesson that I learned in this project that I'll share with you is that there's really no sense in getting yourself worked up for things you don't know. Before I dug this gas line up, I had no idea how it connected from the gas meter to my house. It ran underground somewhere, it ran under the road. I thought maybe it ran under my driveway. I was getting really worked up at the thought of tearing up my driveway and you know, getting, getting in contact with the township. I thought I had to mow underneath the road. All these possibilities. It wasn't until I actually grabbed my shovel and started digging that every two foot I was finding the next answer to the next question. I dug two foot, I found a shutoff valve. 
I used that shutoff valve to diagnose and isolate the problem. I dug four to six feet from there and I found that the gas line did a 90 degree turn and went straight for the meter instead of going under my driveway. And it's like the more I kept digging, the better I felt about the situation. So take that for what you will, uh, just keep digging. that to a life scenario maybe you can apply that to whatever project you're working on currently there's really no point in getting worked up until you actually get in there and get your hands dirty and know what you're dealing with it's really easy for the idea of i don't have gas it's getting cold what do i do there's a big leak somewhere and it's probably underground but then you spend like two hours digging and you have a whole picture and you're like wow i was really getting worked up over something i really was ignorant about so I would just encourage you, if you feel like you're in a similar situation, just just get in there. You can't really know anything or make any progress till you're moving. So grab a shovel and get moving. One step in front of the other, one shovel full in front of the next. Just, just keep going. The picture will kind of show itself. And ultimately, I'm really glad that this project popped up. Um, it could have been timed better. I probably could have figured this out during the summer when I first started the gas line project with the garage. However, now I know that my house doesn't have any leaks. We don't have any gas leaks underground. Everything I did checks out. Everything the gas company did checks out. And ideally, I believe this was going to outlast me. When I bought this house, I had no idea where anything was underground. And now at this point, we've been here for two years. I know where all the water lines are and I know where all the gas lines are. That's something that I can map out and give to whoever buys this house next, whether that's 10 years from now, whether that's my grandkids someday, I have a map that I can reference and that someone else can reference should any problems with either of these systems ever arise in the future. But anyway, um, the more I learn, the more I can preserve and pass on to either the next generation or the next homeowner. Um, and I'm really into the history of this area. So in some small way, I feel like I'm excavating the past and contributing to the future. Anyway, I'm kind of going off on a tangent now, so I think I'm gonna just end this video. Thank you so much for watching, I appreciate it. Good luck on your own projects, and thanks for watching. I won't. There's a spider right here. I'm gonna take you. You're in the shot, bud. Shout out to this guy.